Season two of the Pat and JT podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time, always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Parkville Network. Well, all right. Speaking of the Parkville Network, yes. one of the podcasts we produce. Um, you may know him. His name is Dax Holt, and Adam Glenn is his uh, co-host. Are you the host, and is he your sidekick, or are you guys co-host? No, Dax. we are full-blown co-host. You guys are. You guys are great together. I mean, we, you know I'm the head host, but Obviously. like, well, let's not tell him that, okay? Obviously. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll delete that's, that. That's awesome of you, because no, you kind of guide him along, and he, he that's that's nice of you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's awesome, you guys. And I, I gotta say, like, there's so many times where I'm like sitting back and we're interviewing a guest, and he comes out with the, like the most interesting questions, and I'm like, how the hell did you think of that? Like, where? How does your brain function? Because it's on a whole nother level. I love some of the questions that Adam comes up with. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, can I can I tell his your your history with him and his history? Yeah. yeah so uh, basically. Um, we both worked at TMZ for many, many years. He was one of our head camera guys in New York. So every time we got a big interview in New York, it was mostly Adam who was out on the street filming the celeb. He's got a great relationship with all these celebs. You know, I think I've said it to you before, like Oprah knows him. Tony Robbins knows him. Gail King. Kevin Hart, The Rock, like every single person knows him when they're in New York and they always stop and chat with him because he's just such a good guy, asks great questions and kind of keeps celebs entertained and knows how to promote what they want. So uh, anyway, so we ended up obviously both uh, exiting TMZ and we started talking and we're like, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Let's let's do a podcast. <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started off and um yeah i love i just love his interview style and i also love that our podcast is by coastal i think that's it's really fun yeah i give him my perspective from la he gives me his perspective from new york and uh we just have different backgrounds so it turns into a uh, good banter and a different pool of celebrities they got yeah. the east yeah. coast ones you got the west coast ones for you yeah and well, the fr- and and you guys have been doing you guys have technically been doing it for um, a while, but we just a few of uh, what a couple months ago, you guys were we are very grateful that you trusted us to take over uh-huh. the production of your um, of your podcast, change it a little bit to mm-hmm. Hollywood Raw podcast. And God, the first it sounds so much better now, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a, you got me hooked yeah. up with this great equipment. You got right. Some good editing. Right. It's right. <laughs> we, we sound professional. <laughs> well, and it's about time because you guys have the last, well, the first five, four or five episodes you guys have had, especially two of them have gone. One of them, I mean, insane. Actually, a couple media. of them. I mean, yeah, the, the coverage has been well, awesome. Technically, we've only released three episodes with you guys so far. This is and true. And two of That's them true. have gone bonkers. That's true. That's awesome. But and you, the third you got... one, we just didn't promote as much because we were still so swamped with all the other coverage that we haven't <laughs> right. even had a chance to focus on that one. You need and people. now we've got an even bigger one coming out, by the way. Oh, oh my God. I know. I'm really excited about wait. this. And seriously, you guys are going to need people. You're going to need people to take care of your crap. That's what you're going <laughs> to yeah. do. I it... am waiting for that day. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Actually, yeah. technically... Pat takes care of our crap right now. He's the one editing and <laughs> <laughs> making us sound good. Right? You need somebody to answer your phone calls and, and take care of all that stuff and, and all that good shit. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's your podcast, as a matter of fact, hitting the same day as this podcast. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if everybody wants to check out the Hollywood Raw, if you haven't done it before, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about is who you are interviewing and who this podcast is with and what has transpired. So, so what, what, is this one going first or is, uh, I don't know the time layout. So what is this? What's the time layout? Are you guys re- releasing this one and then a mine? No, that, well, you're, cause yours is going to be on Monday, right? Okay. And our, yep. this is on Monday as well. So they're both coming out at the exact same time. So people listen to this now can go, oh my gosh, right now, not right now, after our podcast, after our then podcast. go to the Hollywood Raw podcast <laughs> yes. right now, find it, subscribe and listen to it. Cause you'll be able to hear the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And please go leave us some like reviews we don't we, we don't have very many reviews because we switched over and now like we don't have very many reviews so we need some help people yeah yeah, yeah leave your review don't say it sucks go put a positive <laughs> review if it's negative review hit me up on twitter and say how much i suck but positive reviews leave on itunes yeah. please please do so this let's again just to just to review in case they haven't already subscribed to this too the previous episodes that they that they can get caught up on who have you had so far so our first one that we uh released with you guys was 
Simon Rex, and his interview went extremely crazy wild because we started talking about Meghan Markle and the fact that, um, you know, they had some kind of relationship in the past. But um, right before the royal wedding, all these British tabloid, tabloids were hitting up Simon, offering him thousands, like $70,000 to basically talk crap on her and say that they had more of a relationship than they really did, uh-huh. saying – you know, convince him to say that they had sex and all this kind of stuff uh, just to make her look bad in the press. So that wow. one went wild. And you know what? Go Let's ahead. hold on just a second because I want to just cover, just kind of catch up real quick. The whole Meghan, uh, Markle, and Harry, because he's not Prince Harry anymore, he's just Harry. Um, they're in LA now. And they're, are they looking yep. for a house yep. right now, trying to find a place? They're in a house, but I don't know if um, if they plan on staying long term. I don't really know what their plans are. I feel like they're just kind of all over the place. Like now we're in Vancouver. Now we're in the U.S. Like I don't think they really know. Um, I believe a lot has to do with Megan's career mm-hmm. and, you know, her doing like voiceover for Disney and like kind of trying to get back into the entertainment industry, which is I mean, you don't have to really get back when you're a duchess well, right. not really more but whatever yeah, you know you're so famous that uh she could probably land any role she wants but i, I think that that's going to depend on if they stay here or go back to canada i don't really know it's it's crazy because didn't is what the the head of disney Iger is he mm-hmm. he did he step down was there something about or, i don't think he stepped down or changed position i can't remember what the deal was there's oh, some you're right you're right he wanted to retire yes that, again that's yeah. who they'd kind of harry had kind of had the conversation with him uh a while back be, you know but kind i mean of, that that was the foot in the door that was yeah. hey she wants to do something she does this voiceover now the world knows that she wants to get back into entertainment so trust me it's yeah. it goes way beyond disney this now is true. i'm assuming you got the heads of Netflix. You got the heads of everyone looking at her, going, "Okay, what can we interest her with?" Seriously, I mean, because it's oh. it's a it's a win win for them because they get her on. People are going to watch whether they like her or not. They're mm-hmm. still going to tune into it, so you know that that's going to be a, just like a cash cow for sure. <laughs> no for offense, sure. but yeah. <laughs> but sure. I was wondering because just recently the Queen did a uh, video. And was talking about um, the going on with the quarantine, and they made mention of the brooch that she wore, which happened to be part of the collection that included the tiara that Megan wore at the wedding. And it was very rare for her to ever wear that. And she also made mention of how they would all get back together. We will all be back together again soon with our families, et cetera. And they thought that she was maybe signaling, like Harry. Well, I think I think <laughs> Queen Elizabeth is very much saddened by the whole thing. Yeah. You know, like I don't think she wanted to lose her grandson out of all of this. I just think that he had had enough. I think I think it's not as easy to be a royal as we all assume. We all look at him like, oh, that sounds so fun. I want to be in front of, you know, I want to live in a castle and have the title and everywhere I go, everyone worship me. But you lose all privacy of your life. Yeah. Yes. All of it, and I think that I think that would be a lot for anyone to take. And it's got to be hard. Suck. Well, he and remember Harry's been he, doing it his entire life, and he saw his mom, even though he was very small, when his mother, you know, and and all she was going through, and I'm sure he's read up on it, and he knows more about mm-hmm. it than even we do. But, um, you know, mm-hmm. the struggle that she went through as well, it's kind of obvious, and she was brought up in that life and knew what to expect, and yeah. he too being seventh in line, it's like, well, pff, yeah. what are the odds? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go do something else. But. He kept trying to get the whole family to go on like a white water rafting trip. <laughs> he would just stay back and take pictures. <laughs> Come on, grandma, let's go. I'll be on the side while you guys go yeah. over the I'll yeah. take, I don't go. Good. I'm going to run this back to the car. I'll be right back. Yeah. I, I really think that like he had the best gig out of all of them. Honestly, yeah. you have the title without the responsibility of eventually being the king of England. Cause God, that does sound kind of like a lot of weight for your shoulders. It does. It does. Seriously. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so thanks for catching us up on that. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and that. Now episode that epi- two. And, well, that, and that episode got picked up by every oh. every media outlet it, it, I can we, think of. They talked about your podcast. Worldwide. I'm like, I was seeing like my, our names pop up in like foreign languages, and like <laughs> foreign language press. It was so crazy that that podcast went wild. And then the following one we did with Melissa Rivers, Joan Rivers' daughter, and she was so candid and honest about what life has been like after her mom's passing and how people, 
still don't really give her credit yeah. for a lot of the things that she's accomplished. They always credit her mom. And Melissa, I think it really has kind of hurt her because she's like, man, I was one of the big people behind Fashion Police. I've been a big producer. I've mm-hmm. been a writer. I've done all these things. I'm, I'm a comedian. But she still lives in that shadow. And I, I think that's a tough place to be when you're, you know, you, you, you're a child of someone that has been so successful and you're so successful, but no one really says it. Everyone's yeah. just like, oh, it's because your mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she's accomplished a lot of things outside of the, the, the shadow of her mother. So much, but no one really knows. And I think that was her frustration. So um, I really liked that podcast. I think I, I like hearing the raw, honest, real mm-hmm. side of Melissa. And I don't know how often she goes in that in depth with people like that. Well, and it got you guys on um, page six mm-hmm. of New yep, York page, Times. Well, we, yeah. Like actually I in print. I, I don't know if we've ever been in the newspaper, but this <laughs> one, they put us in the newspaper. I got to see yeah. my name in the newspaper. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not just online, like online, obviously, but actually in the print print yeah. part of it. That was right. pretty awesome. Did yeah. she Was she talking to about what show is it that's based on her mom? Marvelous Miss Maisel. Thank you. I yep. never made that connection. And I love that show. So it's about a couple famous comedians. Yeah, Phyllis uh, you know, Diller. It's not not just Joan, but there is so many correlations to Joan's life. And she was, you know, she opened up to us. She's like, I'm really hurt by that show. I'm hurt that they, none of the producers ever reached out to me and just said, hey, you know, we, we base a lot of this on your mom. We hope you <laughs> like it as much as we enjoyed making it. And so she has not watched a single episode of it because oh she just feels hurt. By the whole thing. If I'd known that, I probably would have looked at the show completely. I don't know that I would have watched because I'm such a fan of hers and her mom's. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started watching the show, I really didn't know what to expect. I was like, ah, oh, period piece. We'll see what mm-hmm. happens. See how they do. And it kind of blew me away. It was it was well done, and it's it's the, all the actors are phenomenal. Um, yep. but it changes now how I think about it. Now that I know that, it's like, well, that kind of pisses me off yeah. because. Well, like, yeah. Wow. I just hope that someone sees it and reaches out to her yeah. and goes, dang, like we really screwed up by, you know, she thinks that maybe they were just worried that she'd be litigious and she would oh. go after them for some reason. Right. She's like, I'm not, I, I'm not like that. You know, yes, you can't use my mom's image. You can't use her name, but if you're going to pay homage to her, yeah, like I'm down for that. Let her consult, you know, just yeah, kind of exactly. like some ideas and or, or just tell her, you know say something. And she said that Jane Lynch has been the only person that's actually kind of acknowledged her mom because she won an Emmy for the show. And while she was up on stage, she, she thanked Joan and some of these other female comedians and Melissa sent her flowers and just said, thank you for acknowledging my mother. That's sweet. Wow. So, you know, they're aware that of what they're doing. So yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy. My goodness. So, then, so that was huge. This episode that is out today as we speak Monday, yeah. the next one, um, I think it's going to be equally as huge because <laughs> the, the show Tiger King is huge right now. And you guys nailed somebody from the show. So who'd you so, snare? So, yeah, so we uh, <laughs> we snared uh, John Finley, which is uh, <laughs> Joe Exotic's ex-husband, the first one, the, the guy that has like four teeth in his whole mouth. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so we. <laughs> well, that was in the show. He actually has a full set of chompers now. He got a, He's he talked to us about uh, his full denture remake and how he got awesome. his dentures and how hard it was to like transition to actually having teeth in his mouth and how it has given him a lisp and all this stuff. But uh, yeah, <laughs> had John on. I mean, I I have become such a huge Tiger King fan. I mean, the show. I just sat there. My jaw was on the ground the whole time. <laughs> I've dressed up like Joe Exotic. I I'm saw in quarantine. that. <laughs> I yeah. saw that. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> um, but no, I just think the whole storyline is fascinating. I, I don't know how the producers landed upon this gold mine. Like from looking, you know, how yeah. the whole thing kind of started where they were in Florida. And I think it, what were they going after? Like exotic snakes or something? They, when reading? they first got together. And honestly, I've been listening to a podcast that ha- dives in a little bit deeper on their early relationship uh, Carol's and okay. because I've never seen, I haven't seen the show. And the well, reason why are you listening to a podcast about it? If because you seen the show, because I like the crazy, but I can't stand the animal abuse that goes on. And I, I, and I have a hard time watching what little bit of it that I, the first episode, it hit me 
a couple of things happened. And I was like, okay, I just can't go down this road because I, I know they focus on animal abuse as much as the people. They and I think show. that you're probably right because it's. I know it's more selective because there's a lot of stuff. Obviously, they can't get everything in there. And, of course, they don't want to focus on that because that really wasn't the high point, obviously, of this. Um, yeah. But I do know that it was pretty rampant because they had just so many animals and the conditions were not the best. And But anyway, I will probably eventually figure out a way to sit down and watch it because I do. I like the crazy. But listening to them talk about how they first got together and it was like they, they got some animals. And honestly, I think they had really good intentions, but they gathered like 50 some these big cats because they, they took them, they bought, they went there for like just a handful, but they got them all because they were in such terrible conditions that they took them all. To, to rescue them literally and started their, their rescue. And it was, it was, I think reptiles first and then they went to the cats. Well, um, it was, it was this guy like looking into breeding of like snakes or the underground world of like snake buying or something. And then found out about cats and like the whole thing is just so interesting and wild. And like now you've got, you know, murder for hire, you've got yeah. exotic cats, you've got this like, <laughs> flamboyant gay guy in the middle of like Oklahoma you know it's just the whole thing is so right. wild and that's the only word I can think of, word I can think about it um so anyway that that's been fascinating but uh you know when we were talking to John you know we asked him a lot about his relationship with Joe what it was really like um and, and how how it all kind of like came together how they met how he got his job at the zoo um and so I encourage you to come listen to it because it's, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It really is. It interesting. is. It's, it's so interesting. He was, he was a challenge to interview though. Yes. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he is, um, he's yeah, very interesting. He, yeah. He, he speaks with intention and he picks yes. his, he takes his time choosing his words. I, yeah. I think he thinks a lot about he, the words he's going to say, which I was go. very appreciative of. Yes. Um, okay. But I, the, one of the things that I thought was funny was he doesn't realize how famous he is. Right. Yeah, because right. he, he has he, no idea. And, wow. and, and at, the be, wow. at the beginning of the of the episode of your podcast, I thought it was, at one, again, back to Adam asking the most unique, just the most, the weirdest stuff, comparisons. But he said that in during quarantine, the, peop, the people on this show and that meme of the black guy with the big penis are about the only two things that have really gone viral since quarantine. <laughs> and... <laughs> And it's true. And these okay, guys have I missed the other one. Oh, oh, what? Oh, I'll show you. My brother <laughs> sends me them all the time. There's one with the Keurig machine. There's one with the helicopter. I've seen that guy yet. I guess oh. I'm everywhere. I'm not on the right side. Yeah, she's not following the right people. Heck, I guess. Uh, but yeah, they, they join my group text with my guy friends. <laughs> like, they trick you into it every day. Uh, right. Not. All the there was one that uh, have you seen the one on the where he's sitting on the Keurig machine and you, uh, you they, yeah. they zoom out. Yeah, it's on time. Well, yeah. but you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. But you. They <laughs> move the character thing over and it's never mind okay i'll just i'll just show you i can't wait okay yeah. anyway so yeah, but funny. he didn't realize that he was that they they they'd blown up no no he, he yep. just uh, listen i can tell him he's famous all day but he doesn't realize it because he hasn't been out in public got it everyone's yeah. you know sequestered to their houses right now and so i think the second yeah. that he's released from his house and he can go walk around the streets and he can go walk into a grocery store. Yeah. He's going to realize he's really famous because, wow. you know, yeah, he gets a lot of phone calls or he's got people following him on Twitter, but it's not the same as you can't make it through a grocery store without five people stopping and asking for photos. Exactly. Right? Which will happen. Well, it'll happen for sure. Exactly. Get past this thing. That's great. Was there anything that he revealed? I mean, are you like any little teases that you want to throw our way? I, I thought, yeah, I'm, I thought one of the most interesting things was about him and Joe's marriage, but uh, I just don't want to get too in deep because yeah. I want people to go listen yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> no, because it's great. all about the marriage, and uh, he said some surprising things about that. And then uh, one of the most awkward moments was uh, <laughs> we were asking uh, about him and the girl from the zoo, and... We thought they were still together. Nope. He's got a new girlfriend and she was sitting right next to him. Yeah, it was oh, awesome. And we're like, oh, just oh, kidding. <laughs> sorry, dude. Oh, God. So, so I'm going to take it. This wasn't a Zoom. Yeah. Did you, did you Zoom or did, was it just a... We, we, 
Skyped. Okay, so she was there. Oh That's my god, awesome. she was right off side of the camera, and we're talking about how they're asking if they're still together and what it was like and all this stuff. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm not with her anymore. I'm with a new girl." And she just starts laughing, and I'm like, "Oh, oopsie, oopsie. oh, good for him. That's nice to know that he can find a date." And right? I guess the other whatever. <laughs> The other, I get, no, I'm sorry. The more awkward moment was when Adam asked how the sex life was with Joe. Oh, yeah. That's when it got really awkward. That was, yeah, that's, uh -huh. that's actually maybe one of the long pauses I left in there. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh my the God. Tension, the tension. The tension pause. Like, um, um, <laughs> what are we going to say? Uh, okay. That's awesome. It is awesome. So Hollywood Raw Podcast, search it. It's everywhere. Um, and it's on our parkvillemedia.com too. That It's right there as well. And uh, the Hollywood Raw Podcast website coming soon. It's yeah. all coming. But you guys just keep, keep bringing it, man. You guys are doing awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for supporting us and being our... Uh, our, our big production team making us sound so good. We love it. We, it we absolutely love it. Thank yeah. you so much. So I can't wait to see what's what's next. Cannot I can't wait. wait to see what's next either. I yeah. know. Get after it. I know. Right, buddy. Thanks, Dax. <laughs> Thank you, Dax. Thanks, guys. You, Have a good one. You too. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, you can find... Okay, wait. You know, I'm going to pause the ending real quick. Uh, <laughs> at Dax Holt on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. You're right. Uh, and then uh, Adam Glenn. How do people get hold of Adam? At Adam Glenn... G-L-Y-N? G-L-Y-N, yes. On Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, everything. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. <laughs> He's on TikTok. I have yet to... You haven't ticked or talked? Move over. You yeah. Tick Once you do, you're, you're done. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? <laughs> I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, you're done. You'll love it. Yeah. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I was really impressed that you did have all of the clothes you needed in order to convert yourself into the Tiger King. Well, I, I really want to thank Chris Angel and who else was it? Uh, riff raff, <laughs> uh, white trash. I was one year. All these people <laughs> made for a great costume. Putting them all together, it's all the douchebags in Hollywood made, <laughs> made for a great make the Tiger show King. Of costume. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right, Dexter, the man. Thank you, Thanks, buddy. We'll see awesome. you later. Bye, guys. bye, -bye. Uh, It's Pat and JT. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or PatandJT.com. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Download um, the Hollywood Raw podcast now. Subscribe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Podcast. A Parkville Media Production.